Jim actually wanted to up the scale. We made the models in the whole environment half again as big as the first time. There is a point in models and miniatures when they get too big, you start to lose the reason why you're doing it in miniature. A set is about 50 feet wide, 30 feet deep, with a sort of force perspective at the horizon. There's a large area to light. The number of flying and ground HKs involved, split screening it in with live action, interactive light and missiles and explosions on both sides of the line, both live action explosions and doing tilt down particularly since marrying up the foreground and background with explosions going off on both halves, which changes the light and the color on the sets. The same puppet built for the first Terminator is employed again in uh, Terminator 2. That shot was kind of complicated and time consuming to build. The real trick is to not try to make the entire effect happen all at once. Break it up into component parts. The farthest layer is a miniature background with a flying HK and explosions. That was printed into a rear projection plate. The two images, uh, VistaVision plates, are now rear projected onto a single large screen where we blended the two pictures together and animated in go motion that puppet in front of these double rear projection screens. There were four backgrounds combined to be two and two that were shot to end up with one and one, the two large endoskeletons. And full scale set pieces were placed in front of two large screens re-photographed with interactive light and some smoke. Then that went through opticals and we added interactive flashing lights when they were firing the lasers. It's more complicated than you would think to really integrate it and then no one knows anything was done and then you've done your job. It was a quarter scale miniature which made it 18 feet long. The set was 70 feet long. The asphalt area into the miniature factory building was 20 feet wide. The whole reason why you do some of these things miniature is because you get something that big and that unwieldy. The costs become very prohibitive. When it's smaller, you're controlling it. When you roll it over, you don't have to have a whole brand new thing. You, you patch it up a little bit and you do it again. And you know that you're going to do it over and over until you get it and work out the details. When it's a full-scale truck, you can't do that.